And we are back checking out the second Star Wars playset of Disney Infinity 3.0 edition. This is Rise Against the Empire, Matthew. Why is the old dude that I can't remember? Is that Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan was never on Han Solo's ship. He was, a little briefly. He's not the one that's out of place here. He was on the ship on the way to Alderaan when they found the Death Star, like you're seeing right now. But Leia wasn't here. Leia was meant to be hidden, like, on the Death Star in prison. Oh, yeah. How was she here, then? Because, like, you so you know, I, like, the one we checked out before was Twilight of the Republic. And that's, like, a weird sort of, uh, a weird adaptation of, like, some of the Clone Wars stuff in some of the old yeah. locations. This is the same story, but, like, abridged. So characters like Leia are just with you from the beginning. Well, hang on a second. Why Why is the Millennium Falcon inside the Death Star and the guards were just like, ah, it doesn't matter, the ship's here, let's walk away. Well, because that in the film, uh, they get tractor beamed in, or maybe they land in, they, they end up inside the Death Star, and then they do a search of the ship, but they're hidden in the smuggling compartments. But they don't really clarify that here. So you just gotta assume that they're in the smuggling compartments and weren't noticed. It's fine, it's for kids. I have one more question, and I need. Yeah, why is Chewbacca looking like a furry anthropomorphic dog? Uh, that's how they look like now. That, they look like that in the Rebels uh, cartoon it's as well. It's terrifying. All I keep thinking of is like, there's going to be gift porn of this. Uh, almost certainly. So yes, uh, these videos are not PG. <laughs> I should have said that <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, yeah, watch out for that. But whatever. So we're on board the Death Star, playing as Princess Leia, totally canon. It's probably canon. And um, this is one of the weirder levels of this playset, because, like, whereas most of Twilight of the Republic was, like, pretty straightforward, I mean, there's still open-world areas, you can do side missions and stuff, there's tons of activities and races and things. But uh, in this, it's like, this is three big hubs of, like, uh, kind of, like, pseudo-sandbox stuff, where you can, like, build buildings, call down different vehicles and stuff, in, like, three pretty big open-world areas. One on Tatooine, one on Endor, one on Hoth. But this is like one of the uh, more straightforward levels with like stealth mechanics like we just seen with that mouse droid. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's again unlike anything else in the rest of these playsets. Yeah, I mean I can s I can tell this is very authentic to the real Star Wars because you just managed to kill like five clones because they just kept missing you because they're so inaccurate. That's that's I mean isn't in right there's some visual uh a weirdness we'll see a bit of it in this video like the vehicles they sort of like going up slopes that you're not meant to they will go up them but they'll jankle around a little bit it's pretty cool it's pretty endearing and if you'll notice occasionally the stormtroopers will slide as if they're moon well they won't move their feet but they will slide either away or towards you when they're firing i don't th I, like they have a running shooting animation but it doesn't always work it's pretty weird <laughs> There's some little janky bits. Also, you can air juggle with your blaster. Of course, I remember that time in Star Wars 4 when Princess Leia gave a stormtrooper a European uppercut and then shot it five <laughs> yeah. times in the air and killed it. <laughs> it's fucking really cool. So yeah, like like these stealth mechanics, like you don't want to get in there or they'll let the guards, but if you evade the asteroid. It's simple, but it's also weird to have like vision cones. Uh, this game is like a, this game is like a character action game, but it's pretty different from Twilight of the Republic. Which is more platformy. This is more like shooting, less swordplay. But some of the moves are still the same. Like if you, if I was playing as Luke right now, if you'll take a look at the minute, I still have a lightsaber. The attack patterns are pretty similar, but you know, yeah, it's weird. Like you don't have a blaster in the Twilight of the Republic. Yeah, there's less of this in Twilight in Rise Against the Empire, and more like uh, sandbox open world stuff. More vehicles. Both of them have space combat, but there's more, like, directed space combat, with, like, the trench run and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's... They're really very different, you know, considering they're in a kid's game and you'd expect them to be, like, the same shit. And I just felt my death. Good job. Star Wars is ruined. Yeah, Princess Leia will never marry Han Solo. There will never be three kids. One of them Wait, will they marry? Sith Lord. Yeah, I mean, in the Legends canon. I don't know if they marry in the new canon. Because uh, Han Solo already had a black wife in the new canon. It's pretty amazing, actually. I remember hearing that, and then the guy in Star Wars 7 is Han Solo's son. That's the apparently. speculation. I don't know if it's true, yeah. Apparently he's a Jedi as well. Yeah, he is a Jedi. He's on the poster with a lightsaber. And he's in the most recent Instagram trailer they put out, which is about five seconds of him 
the only new shot in that trailer is him with a lightsaber about to face Kylo Ren in the uh, in the I snow. Who Kylo Ren is, but okay. Kylo Ren is the not quite Sith Lord with a you know the cool crossbar lightsaber with the hand yeah. like, the sides on it. He's that dude. So we're just going to swip over to look. You see, it's pretty quick. Just knocking one miniature off and uh, putting a new one on. I thought you said he didn't have a blaster. He has a lightsaber. He uh, he has both, but in the Twilight of the Republic, you only have lightsabers. Ah, uh, okay. So you can only play as characters from the playset. Uh, so you could play as like Han or Chewie figures. I don't have at the minute. Or when you unlock, you'll see them like in World of like collectibles. You can unlock other characters to play. So, like, I unlocked Leia, for example, in the Twilight of the Republic, so now I can throw her miniature on whenever it take place outside of her playset. When you call them playsets, I just, like, kind of cringe a little. It just sounds weird. Yeah, no, but it's really... It's the, it's kind of the best shorthand for it, really. I mean, it's what they call them, but... So, like, weirdness, see? Like, I should be dead. My blast is just flying past the door physics. <laughs> but, yeah, like, that officer... Um, Again, it's simple, but if you don't kill them, they'll keep calling in reinforcements. You know, that's like a... Was in like Wolf, the same mechanic was in Wolfenstein, for example. It's not something you'd necessarily think about in a kid's game. Yeah. It's, uh, there's, there's stuff there, like... Obviously, I don't have any kids, so I don't know what it would be like for, like, a family. But I imagine if you wanted to play a game with your kids, uh, and obviously you couldn't get them playing, like, you know, uh, mature games and stuff, that would be too hard and ultimately too violent for them to watch. Like, this, you could do worse than this. Like, the LEGO games aren't as involved and interesting from a gameplay perspective as this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a Star Wars LEGO game on the DS. Yeah. Also, hang on a second. Why are those weird alien bird things in every single map? They're Minox, and they're collectibles. Uh, there's a hundred in each playset. You just have to shoot them. I was going to say, because I thought the game was broken, because they seem to be everywhere, and I'm like, that thing was never in the Death Star. <laughs> no, but they were in that one asteroid. That totally makes an appearance. Yeah, Minox, they're everywhere. Uh, they're in the space levels too, you'll just fly, you'll see them like flying around capital ships and stuff. I saw one stuck on the back of a Star Destroyer. I so. saw one in a cutscene in the last video. <laughs> yeah. And then when it when it came back into gameplay, it wasn't there anymore. No, well, they, they do like loops and stuff. Uh, that's why they're way easier to get in this, because you can just shoot them, whereas if you don't have guns, you only have lightsabers, you actually have to get near them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's pull the Millennium Falcon. Do a bit of space combat. Oh, I remember this scene. It's a little bit of bridge, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens in the original film, to be fair. <laughs> and then Luke just kind of sits there and he's like, Oh man, Obi-Wan's dead. They've Better made, leave. <laughs> they've made Luke even more whiny in this than he was in the film. They have. Darth Vader, it, his mask does not look right. It looks like a gimp mask. <laughs> they are. I really like the art style. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. I don't look. Luke looks really weird with his like chiseled chin and then his whiny face. But that's what the figure looks like. I guess, but he doesn't look right. It looks like he should be like a jock with the chiseled chin, and then his whiny face is just like, "No, I'm a nerd." I, yeah, he is. Uh... Darth Vader looks like the crossbreed between one of those mouse droids and a toaster. You, yep, sure, I can see that. Like the grill, but the shape of a mouse droid on his head. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what George Ford and gl grills were modeled after. So we've just uh, zoomed forward basically an entire film to the part where we're now taking on the Death Star. We'll forget about the you haven't seen, it's fine. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a look at the trench run. It's uh... Wait, yeah, well, isn't there like an entire scene at Hoth before this? No, that's the second film. This all happens in the first film, but with stuff in between. Like, they flee to Yavin, and uh... I just died oh, is that instantly. When, is that when they fight with the Ewoks? <laughs> no, that's episode That's episode 6. This is all episode 4 at the minute. Is this the first Death Star, then? Yes. This is the complete Death Star. You know, in, you know... Hang on, isn't Star Wars set in the past? Uh, in the, yeah, Galaxy Far, Far Away, a long time ago. Yeah, so how come they can build two Death Stars in the course of two films, and yet in real life we can't even build, like, rockets that don't explode? Well, it's... It's interesting, because, like, uh, you'll remember from Battlefront 2, where you're collecting the power source from, like, Gito for the Death Star 1, 
It's like, that was 19 years before it was completed. I don't know how long. It started before, obviously, the end of the Clone Wars. It was like 19 years in the going. You saw the plans, Geonosis, and Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. But then, yeah, in like two years off between the two films, they totally have a second Death Star, mostly operational. How do they hide building a second one? I mean, sure, the first one, no one expects it. They're like, man, this like giant asteroid has appeared out in space somewhere. Let's not go check it out. Oh, wait, it's a Death Star. Uh, built. I, don't, I don't remember. One of them was built at the Moor, which is like a load of black holes. There's a secret facility and stuff. It's like, that's the thing about space. It's huge. So unless you know where you're going, you know, you can't just... It's not like directions that you could fly anywhere and find nothing, or you could fly exactly to coordinates and find loads. I want that as a quote somewhere. Just Kyle Shimon. Space is huge. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's Rise Against the Empire. It's cool. Check back soon. May the force be with you.